Knowledge for Men, episode 28. Welcome to knowledgeformen.com, where boys turn into men, where men turn into leaders, into lions, the ferocious few who stand strong, a place where you grow to become the man you were born to be. It's time to take massive action towards the life you want, get the health, get the relationships, business, and career you've always dreamed of, achieve a level of success and happiness that you've been searching for for so many years. Life has given you enough, and it's time to take a stand and take full control of your life. Stand with us as we interview the most inspiring and successful leaders to give you real world advice to crush life and awaken the sleeping giant inside of you. Today's podcast is brought to you by audible.com. Get a free audiobook download today at kfmbook.com. There's over a hundred thousand titles to choose from for your smartphone, tablet, or computer. It's a perfect way to listen to your favorite books in the car, in the gym, or at home. Check out kfmbook.com to start learning in your downtime. All right, guys, I'm here with T. Harv Eker, the author of the number one New York Times and Wall Street Journal's best-selling book, The Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. He's also the president and founder of Peak Potentials, one of the fastest-growing success training companies in North America. And today, we're going to hear his story of how Harv went from zero to millionaire in two and a half years. And guess what? He's also going to teach us how to get rich. Yeah, exactly. It's going to happen. I've, I'm so excited for this episode. I've been trying to get Harv on the show for months, been working with this team, and we finally have it here. So you're in for a treat. All right, Harv, how are you doing today? It's going amazing. Thank you. All right, Harv, I always jump in with a favorite success quote. What do you got for us? And if you can explain why. All right. I have a lot of quotes, obviously, that I've created and that I've heard and I've studied for a long time. But if you're asking me about the one that makes the biggest difference in my life is this one. And here it is. It's only three words. Is everyone ready? Here it is. This is it. This is it. Now, I got really PO'd when I heard Michael Jackson's show was uh, called This Is It. But then I you know, kind of let my guard down and said, you know what? He's smart for calling it that. This is it. So what does that mean? Well, like maybe a lot of people listening right now, I have always been one of these people that as a person who wants to succeed, an achiever, etc., a lot of us are thinking into the future. Most achievers, if you will notice, think more future-based than they do past-based. And of course, there's some exceptions to the rule, but we're always thinking, dreaming, you know, about the vision and what we want our life to be. And But here's the issue with that. When you start thinking in that way, it's great from the standpoint of, well, it's, you got a vision, you got a picture, you're working towards it, and that's great. But you know what happens? A lot of times, you're not fully happy in the present. You're working towards it. There's a lot of stress. There's a lot of challenges, a lot of issues, and we forget to be happy in the present. And so we're always looking for what can be improved. And another way of saying that, Andrew, is we're always looking for what's wrong with the current situation. I'm going to say this bluntly. This is at a very high level because it's easy for someone to say, yeah, you can do it. You know, go have your vision, have your goals, go for it. Well, you can. But the problem is, is that if you're only happy once you reach those goals, you might have five or 10 or 20 years of unhappiness before you ever get there. So I noticed that for myself, that when I was young and I quote unquote inexperienced at the time, it was all about the future. Everything was the future. And if I wasn't getting there fast enough, I would get bummed out and pissed off. And so I started to realize that I need to cherish each and every moment along the way, that the journey was important. It wasn't just the result. And certainly everyone's heard that before, but hearing it and living it are planets apart. And when you're in the throes of trying to create something for yourself and looking for the right thing to do in your right direction, it's easy to just kind of go, oh man, today sucks in comparison. So my whole life, Andrew, was all about the grass is greener. When I get over there tomorrow, when this happens, finally, then I'm really going to feel good. Then I'm going to be happy. Then I'm going to have finally made what I want. And it just wasn't working for me because I wasn't getting where I wanted that quickly. And so I wasn't very happy all the time or a lot of the time. And so I created this phrase as a reminder to tell me this is it, meaning there is no better there than here. 
the grass is not going to be greener over there than over here. Our mind, and everybody's going to listen to this, and, and again, this is the voice of stupidity turned into experience that's speaking right now. If people ask me, Andrew, what's the best thing you can bring to people? I can tell you what I did that didn't work, okay? <laughs> that's what I can do really well. And what I do now that does work. But really thinking about always about what's wrong with the present, what could be better, the grass is greener, when I get there over it, then everything will be great, then I'll really be happy, then I'll really feel great. That was one of the biggest mistakes I ever made in my whole life. And here's the reason why, everyone. It's because, I'm sure you've heard this before, fortunately or unfortunately, you take yourself with you wherever you go. And what's the problem? The problem is me. The problem is you. It's not the external situation. It's never the external situation. And what that means is that we start thinking about, oh, in the future, things will be better. In the future, things will be better. In the future, I'll feel good. In the future, I'll be happy. But here's the problem. That phrase, in the future, I will be, becomes your automatic habit. And so even when things are good, you wouldn't even recognize them because your normal brain function phrase is, oh, it'll be better later. And when I get to another 100,000, when I get to another million, that's when it'll be really good. And it just becomes this treadmill of when this happens, then I will. And that is a mind habit. And unless you break out of that habit, I will tell you this right now, you can have a billion dollars, you can have your life perfectly together, and you will not be happy. You will always feel like something is awry, something is missing, unsatisfied. It'll never come together for you for your entire life. Why? Not because it's not together, because you don't see it. Because all you see is the future. So this is a long way of saying, very, very long way of saying, this is it. There is no better then than now. There is no better there than here. This is as good as it's ever going to get. And if you cannot appreciate and enjoy this moment right now, if you cannot train yourself, train yourself, habitualize yourself to enjoy this moment, I promise you this, everyone, You'll never enjoy any moments. This is it. Very simple, yet so powerful. And I think it's something we all need to really step back and just think about. And if everyone could do that, I think there would be a lot less zombies walking around in the world right now. <laughs> let's dive in. I'm really excited for the way that this show's already started. Harv, let's hear your story. Let's hear your journey of how you got started with what you do. I want to reference your audience specifically. I know that most of you guys are kind of, you know, young men <laughs> and, uh, you know, you're looking for what's your thing to do? How do you make it? How do you, what's your direction? Where do you go? How do you jumpstart it? How do you take the fast track? So I can relate to you and I hope you can relate to me because I was you and I still think I am you. So what does that mean? It means that I left school after first year of college. Why? Because it wasn't going fast enough for me. I wanted to become a millionaire, and I'll get into the rationale as to why, but my parents basically taught me that money meant survival. They came from Europe, and they had nothing when they came, a half a loaf of stale bread on the boat. They were right off the boat, and I'm kind of proud to say that. They came with nothing. They created a little bit of a life here, but they taught me, they conditioned me to believe that money meant survival, not that money meant, oh, a nicer life. Life, a better car, a nicer stuff for your family, uh, more security. It didn't it meant survival? You have money, you live. You don't have money, you die. It's as simple as that. So you know, for me, money was everything, and I had to become a millionaire. The more, the better, in order to feel survival. That's what I had to do. After first year of college, I thought I was going to be a, a lawyer. I went to a couple of lawyer classes after you know during at the end of first year to kind of you were allowed to go and test things out. After two classes, I said I'm never going to do this. Yeah, this is all about rules. I'm anti rules. Forget it. So I didn't know what to do anymore. I lost. I went home. I said to my parents, I said I'm going to. This is everybody. Listen to this. I'm going to take the proverbial year off <laughs> and get my head together and see where I really want to go. Well, of course, that year lent, lent was for the rest of my life, and I never went back to school. And so 
for the next, listen to this, everybody, for the next 12 years, I was going for it. I was hungry. I was one of these people. I didn't have money issues. I wasn't thinking, oh, money's bad. Your rich people are greedy. No, I wanted to be a millionaire and the faster and the better. That's all I knew. For 12 years, I struggled. And I mean struggled. And I was kind of voted in school, like most likely to succeed. I always had the ideas. I was the action guy. I was a bit of a leader. And I was hurting. And what does that mean? It means I was trying my best, but I was broke 90% of the time. I was so discouraged. I was so disappointed in myself that I'm going to be honest with everybody here. For a, a several months at one point, I covered the mirrors in my apartment. I couldn't even look at myself. I was disgusted with myself. I didn't know what. I had gone through my fourth business in a row that had failed in the same year. So I ended up in those 12 years with 14 different businesses and 12 different jobs trying to find myself, trying to find what is it going to be? How am I going to make it? If I just find, and listen to this, everybody, this is what a lot of people think that's a mistake. And here it is. If I just find the right vehicle, the right race car, the thing that's moving and grooving and everybody's buying today, if I just hop on that, I'm going to get rich. I was positive that was the way to do it. There was no way to change my mind. In fact, I still own the very first issue, the inaugural issue of Entrepreneur Magazine. And when that came out, I said, this magazine is for me. This is my magazine. And I was positive. Just give me the right vehicle. I'm going to jump on. I'm going to fly. Guess what, everybody? It didn't work. It didn't happen for me. And so finally, I'm going to tell you something that I thought I would never happen. And here's what happened. I was living in the basement of my parents' home. I had to move back because I had no money. I hope anybody, <laughs> I hope nobody can relate to this, but I'm sure a lot of you can. Okay. <laughs> I had to move home. I was now 26 years old. I'd been out of school for like seven years, out and about. I'd been living around different places in the country, trying to make it this business, that business, having to move home broke. My parents, of course, they didn't let me forget it. Okay. You left school. We told you never to leave school. You blew it, blah, blah. You're going to amount to nothing in the whole thing. A friend of my father's played cards with him every Monday night. And this man, my father wasn't rich, but this man owned half the city. My father knew him from Europe. And this guy, I'm telling you, he owned half the apartment buildings and all of the, where I lived, it was in Toronto at the time. This guy was wealthy. If he wasn't a billionaire, I don't know what he was, but he was a quiet guy, wealthy, wealthy, wealthy. I come up the stairs. He sees me. He says, how you doing? He says, don't answer. I know how you're doing. Terribly. Your father says that you're a bum. Oh, oh, great, great. Thank you. You know, he says, here's the thing, my friend. He says, if you're not doing as well as you'd like to be doing, obviously there's something you don't know. Now, being a young, brash man at the time, I thought I knew what? Everything. But I listened to him because he only because he was rich. And I said, okay, so what do I need to do? He says, let me ask you a question. What do you want? I said, I just want to be rich. I just want to be well off. He says, that's not a very good goal, but if that's what you want, you can go there first and then see that that doesn't quite work by itself. But hey, you'll have to figure it out. I said, listen, if I get rich, I'm happy to figure things out after that. How many of you can relate to this, right? So, so he says very simply, he says, well, what do you want to do? I said, I want to get rich. He says, so do you know how to do that? I go, well, obviously not. He says, so how do you think you're going to find out? I said, I don't know. He says, why, why do you have to reinvent the wheel? Why don't you do what rich people do? I said, what? He says, if you want to get rich, why don't you just do what rich people do? And nobody ever said that to me. I never read that in one book. I never heard that on any CDs, tapes, nothing. If you want to get rich, just do what rich people do. I said, so what do rich people do? He says, ah, that you need to find out for yourself. If I tell you, you won't do it. I said, well, how do I find out? He says, how do you find out anything? Learn it. So I wasn't doing anything anyway. So I spent the next six months, six months, I was still broke, studying rich people. I read books. I read magazines. I read articles. I read everything on rich business people because that's how I wanted to make it. And I developed seven steps that I found that they seem to all have in common that I saw. 
So I went to his office and I said, his name was Samuel. I said, Samuel, I wanted to talk to you. So he made me sit in his office waiting for him for four freaking hours. This guy was a little man. I sat in his office for four hours in the waiting room, finally lets me in. And he says, what do you want? I said, I've been waiting. He says, I don't care how long you've been waiting. What do you want? I said, I wanted to tell you my seven steps. He says, get out. Don't tell me. Do it and see if they work. And he slammed the door. So I was beside myself. And I said, okay, well, I'm just going to do what he said. So I had no money. I borrowed $2,000 on my credit card, my visa card. And I opened what, again, a situation where I, I was, here's the, and I'm going to go back in a second here and tell you why I opened this, but I opened one of the first retail fitness stores in the world, exercise equipment store, retail, okay, selling exercise equipment primarily for the home. And I started with $2,000 on my credit card, and I, using these seven principles, I was able to open 10 stores myself in only two and a half years. And then I sold half my company shares to the H.J. Heinz Corporation, the ketchup people, the ketchup people for, for half of it for $1.6 million. Now, in, that, in those days, that's like $106 million today because it was unheard of, okay? And so all of a sudden, in two years, I was a millionaire, started with nothing, okay? And so there's a lot of lessons to be had from that. And so that kind of is what happened to me. But again, a lot of things occurred where I learned what not to do before I learned what to do. All right. And what were those seven principles that you just discussed earlier? And also, what do we need to learn not to do so we don't make those same mistakes? Well, you know what? The seven principles are actually not for right now. But the most important things is the elements of what I thought was the way to do it, which was the wrong way to do it. And so let me start with one of those. The first thing was that I was sure, as I said earlier, everybody, that if I just jumped on the right horse, the right car, the right race car, I would get rich. That was a mistake. And here's why. I was sure of that I went through, again, 14 businesses with that principle. So when I was doing that, I was sure that I said it was always something wrong. It was, all, you know, this didn't work or that didn't work or, the, you know, the economy went bad or this guy didn't pay me or my partner was screwed up me. And it was always something. And so finally, I said, OK, a friend of mine called me up. He says, I've got a hot business. I'm in it. At the time, I was in Florida. He was in California. He was when I have best friend. He says, I'm in killing it in this business. You've got to get in. So I got into this business. And I was doing exactly the same product he was doing. It was actually a novelty hat type of thing. And I was selling it to universities and blah, 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 and all that kind of stuff. And I was in the exact business he was in. And three months later, I was almost broke again. And he had quadrupled his income. Three months after that, I was broke. I was ready to claim bankruptcy. He was almost a millionaire. He, I got in two weeks after him. He was almost a millionaire. In eight months, I was claiming bankruptcy. And I learned, Andrew, the biggest lesson right there, that I was wrong. It's not get on the right vehicle and you'll fly. I was wrong about that because it's not about the vehicle. It's not about the car. It's really about the driver of the car. But that never dawned on me. It never dawned on me that I was not only a part of the equation, but the biggest part of the equation. So I talked to him and I said, oh my God, like I'm ready to go bankrupt. You're making a millionaire. And so actually, so he started saying to me, he says, well, listen, your attitude sucks. And the way you're going about things sucks. And the way you think about things sucks. He said, I've been talking to you. And, you know, I mean, I'm, I don't even want you near me because you're like, you know, the way you think is just bringing me down, man. You know, everything is for you is about blame and complain. And so I started realizing that. I said, my God, I am a victim. My parents, when being in Europe, they were victims. But I had taken that on. And so I started, and here's interesting, it wasn't to get rich, but because I had a newborn son, because of that, I wanted to be the best father possible. So I started working on myself because I had some, let me say it this way, be bluntly, I had some anger issues. I didn't want to do the same thing my dad did to me, okay? And so I started working on myself with some belief change modalities. And all that is is a way of changing the way you think 
naturally. So it just naturally think in a very different way. And these started to work very, very well with my fatherhood thing. So I started using them on myself and my money and my way of my thinking. And, and literally, ever since I began doing that, everything began to change. So now, when I started using the seven principles, they started to work. Uh, before that, they were just principles that anybody could do. But without you, I'm going to say this to everybody, listen closely. Your belief may be that if everything in the world is the right timing, the right situation, if you learn the right skills, et cetera, et cetera, you're going to be fine. You're going to be great. You're going to be rich. I'm going to say this right now. It's probably not going to happen. And here's why. Because all those things on the tree are the branches and the leaves and the, the branches and, and even the trunk but they're not the root. There's only one root in your success. And you know what it is? It's the one in the mirror. You, everyone listen closely. This will change your life. You are the one and only root to your success. Everything else is gravy, but you are the meat and potatoes. You are that root. And if you don't strengthen yourself, and what do I mean by strengthen? You don't get yourself right. Listen closely. I hope you're all writing this down. Three ways. Listen closely. Your mind's got to be right. Your character has got to be right. And your habits have got to be right. And if any of those three are faulty, it's like trying to drive a race car with one arm and one leg. Okay? You got a big problem ahead of you. And that's, Andrew, what I didn't know. I thought it was all out there. I got the right skills. I got the right technique. I was an excellent copywriter. I got the right business. I got the right principles. None of it worked because I was the wrong me. I didn't get myself together first. You are the root. You are the king. You, you are the one that will lead your success. Let me put it another way. People say to me in my seminars all the time now, Harv, how do I be a success? How do I be a success? I said, you got it. If you want to be a success, you have to be the success. If you are a success, everything you touch will turn into a success. But if you are not personally a success, everything you touch will turn into a not success. You will taint. You will either paint or taint everything you touch. You work on you, and I promise you, your life will glow. Your life will take off because you are the root of all that. And I hope you recognize everyone. I'm not just talking about business here or money here. I'm talking about your health. I'm talking about your relationships. I'm talking about your happiness. I'm talking about all of it because you are the root to all of it. You get that right. If you get that right, it'll all be right. But if you don't get that right, it'll all be not right. You'll always feel like something's missing and it won't work for you. That's why my friend became a millionaire and I was ready to claim bankruptcy. It wasn't about the business and it wasn't even about the principles. It was about me. All right. So what can guys do to become the right person and have the right mindset so that they can tackle these opportunities when they present themselves? Well, most of it is going to be a little bit of common sense, but it's not your sense. I'm going to say this in a nicer way. If you were to say to someone, if I said to somebody, let's, let's talk about beliefs, okay? Let's talk about, like, you know, my book is Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. We've been able to, with that book is sold over 1.8 million copies. It's in 44 different languages around the world. It has been, it was in the top 10 books of the decade. And I only say that not because it's a grandiose myself, but because it seems to work for people. And all it is is literally having people understand that the way, if you want to get rich, do what rich people do. If you want to do what rich people do, you have to think like rich people think. First comes thought, then comes action. Write that down, everybody. First comes thought, then comes action, then comes result. So your results are as a result of your actions. But how do you take action? They come from your thinking process. Now, here's the key thing, everyone. Why do you think the way you think? Why do those thoughts come up in your head and not the guy next to you? Because you've been conditioned, programmed to think those thoughts, okay, from learning from when you were very young. And that's what Secrets of the Millionaire Mind, and that's what all of our work is primarily, about understanding where you got the thoughts you got that create the actions you create, that create the results you create, all right? So backing everything up, bottom line is that you've got to think 
like a rich person think. Now, if I said to you, if I said to half the people on this call right now, so Andrew, you said in in the pre-brief that a lot of your market is somewhere between 18 and 35, right? Good. All right. So a lot of your market, if I asked them their belief and I said, here's a question for you, why aren't you rich right now? Well, that's a really good question, by the way. That we have a we have a new program called our Life Makeover program, and we ask that question, people just like they start throwing up and everything. Okay, it's like, oh my god, why did you ask? That? Okay, why aren't you rich right now? Well, some people say I'm rich. No, I mean financially. To me, rich is a probably minimum of a ten million dollar net worth. Then you start getting rich. Before that, you know, you're comfortable. But today, ten million bucks. Okay, you're pretty rich. I don't. For me, that's not rich anymore. But it's a nice start. Okay, ten million bucks. You're rich. Before that, you're well off. But I wouldn't call you rich. So, rich is at least ten million and up. And I'm not saying you have to have that. But why aren't you rich right now? Ninety percent of the people listening right now are going to have the same answer. Well, because I'm young. Because I'm young. That's why I'm not rich right now. I'm, I'm just getting started. I've just finished school. I just in my first job. I just in my first business. I haven't got blah, 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 blah. I don't care. But here's the deal. Really? Is that your reason? Is that your belief? Well, guess what? Your belief is inaccurate. Why is it inaccurate? Because Andrew, more than anyone else, could probably show you 10 people who are your age and are mega wealthy. 10, 20, 100. There's probably people your age that are billionaires. You know there are. So why aren't you rich right now? Well, obviously your excuse about your age doesn't cut it anymore, does it? No, it doesn't. So common sense says, well, most people believe that I'm too young to be rich. And I say to you, you better challenge that, baby. Because if you don't challenge that, you'll always be too young to get rich. First, it'll be 20s too young. Then 30s too young. Then 40s too young. Then you know what's going to happen? Your next one is, now I'm too old to get rich. <laughs> because it's a freaking habit. The mindset is a habit. Listen, there's no reason you shouldn't be rich right now if that's what, what you were going for. None. Zero. Say, but Harv, you know, you're kind of talking in a dream world. It takes time. It does. But I've got students that started with me when they were 12 years old that are wealthy now at 18. Wealthy. So yeah, it takes time. So yeah. But if you keep on with your belief that I'm too young, guess what's going to happen? That belief's going to stay with you for five, seven, 10 years, and you will be too young. And then you'll be too old. So you got to get rid of every way of thinking that does not support success now. Success now. And I'll tell you, if you want to get rich, the best way to get rich, everybody, is to listen closely. You know what? Let me do this. Do you want to ask me some more stuff or do you want me to get right into how to get rich? Hmm. Oh, I just need some time to think about this question. Um, <laughs> absolutely, Harv. Go ahead. Tell us how to get rich. Okay. I'm going to tell you how to get rich. <laughs> now, listen. First of all, I always start my seminars. and I didn't forgot to tell you this, but don't believe a word I say. You shouldn't believe a thing I say. Nothing. Why? Because I can only come from my own experience. It doesn't make it true. It doesn't make it false. It doesn't make it right. It make, doesn't make it wrong. It just makes it my experience. All I can let you know, however, is that this, these principles work for me and have now worked for over, listen closely, 2 million of my students worldwide, 104 different countries, 2 million students. That's a lot of students. So I have a strong suspicion of what works and what doesn't work in the real world based on what? based on the feedback I get from people who do the programs and get the information. So, but don't believe a word I say. Try it out in your own life. If it works for you, keep doing it. If it doesn't work, throw the damn thing out, okay? I want to, this wasn't part of this conversation, but this is the kind of stuff that I'm working on right now. Why? Because it works for people. Even when I do my seminars, the Millionaire Mind, the three day, I haven't done a Millionaire Mind in North America in like two or three years, but I do like four or five of them a year but I always do them internationally. I open up countries and then I send my trainers in. I have seven trainers. I send my trainers in to do the rest of the country once I open the country up with five or 7,000 people in the audience for three days. So these are very big time things, okay? And uh, like this year, last year I opened up Poland and uh, South Africa just because I want to go. This year I'm opening up, and don't tell anybody, you're the first to know. <laughs> in October we're opening China and then in November we're opening up India. And then next year, we're opening up Russia and we're opening up South America. So you're the first people to know. I haven't told anybody that. But that's when I go out and I teach. So 
even though it's not part of the course, I, when I'm teaching there, when I go there, I ask people one question. Do you want to know how to get rich? And they all, of course, go freak out. Yeah, I want to know. So, you know, I'm going to get off the course right now. I'm going to spend the next hour. I'm going to teach you how to get rich. Okay. All right. So if you have a pen or pencil handy, you might want to listen. All right. Because this is not bullshit. This is real. Okay. Here it is. Listen closely. Okay. First of all, let's just take the given. The given, as I said earlier, you got to work on you. You are the root. If you're not right in mind, in character, and in habit, nothing's going to work. So you might as well throw the whole thing out. It doesn't matter. Now, once you've got that handled, now the question becomes, how do I get rich? Okay. So the answer to that is, listen closely now, money, rich, is a result. I'm going to say this again. Rich is a result. Money is a result. It's a result of something. Meaning if you focus on money, you're already too late. You're already, if you focus on rich, you're already too late. You're not focusing on the creation. You're focusing on the result of the creation. So now let's back it up. What creates money? How do you get money? Do you get it from the stars? Do you get it from moon? Do you get it from God? Do you get it from the ground? Where do you get money? Write this down, everybody. There's only one place you get money from other people. Write that down. All your money comes from other people. You need to know that. We're the only beings on this planet or any other planet that uses the currency called money. Everything else uses other things, air, oxygen, you know, energy, but we use money and we're the only ones. Cows don't use it. Chickens don't use it. All right. Only, and plants don't use it. We use it. So all your money's got to come from other people. Great. So you want money, right? Good. So, and you know, it comes from other people, right? So where are you going to get your money from them? So here's the next question for you. Why would someone give you their money? They're going to have to give you their money, aren't they? Good. Good to understand that. All right. Tell me, why would someone give you their money? Because they like you? Because you have a happy face? Because you're young? No. No one's going to give you their money because of any of those reasons. There's only one reason, primarily, that they're going to give you their money. And here it is. Write this down. Because you are going to help them. You're going to help them. Really? That's right. I'm not going to give you my money unless you help me with something. Okay, here's another way of saying that. Because you're going to, here it is, solve a big or little problem for them. There you go. I just gave you the secret to wealth. The secret to wealth is not to try and get rich. The secret to wealth and money is to solve problems for people. The definition of an entrepreneur or even a person in a business or a person in a job is, listen closely, a person who solves problems for people at a profit or for pay. I'll repeat it for you. Write it down, please. A person who solves problems for people at a profit or for pay. So what are you? You are a problem solver. Now, do you look at yourself like that? No. Here's how you look at yourself. I want to be successful. I want to get rich. I want to make money. Bad move, guys. Bad move. Because none of that thinking makes you any money. Nobody pays you for you to be rich. Nobody gives a shit. A hoot. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay? So the only thing they care about is themselves. So what are you in the business of? A lot of you are searching for direction. Are you? Are you looking for direction? Let me help you with that. And this is what changed my life. Your job is to find a problem that you can really, and here's the words, really and truly help people with. Solve a problem for them. Really solve a problem. Not BS, but really help them with. You see, you, everyone listening, is different in what they can solve for people and how good they are at certain things. A lot of you are, you know, when we first started this call, Andrew was nice enough. He said, turn off your alerts. I went, what, what are you even talking about? Go to your outlook on your left-hand side. Turn that down. Go to your thing. Turn that down. Close outlook. Blah, 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 blah. I went, go to your side. I went, oh my God, I know, this guy knows what he's doing. I know what he's talking about here. And I did. I, saw, I was impressed. See, Andrew understands certain things about technology, and he may very well be able to marry and use, like he is, technology with his passion of helping men go to the next level and his age and all. That's his passion, you see. But you know what? For a lot of you, that's not your thing. 
Your thing might be helping people with their golf game or helping people with their relationships with their parents or helping people with their relationships with getting started in business or finding a direction or getting in shape or whatever. So what I'm saying is this, you must be qualified to help that person with their problem. You can't just BS your way through it. You've got to be decent at it, good at it. You probably have to have solved the problem for your other people, for your self in a small way or in a large way. Why do I teach what I teach? Because I was freaking broke for 30 freaking years. That's why. And I hated it. And I felt like crap. I know what it feels like. And so I was very, very fortunate to find methods and ways that started working for me. And so today it's my not only my passion, but my ability to truly help people solve that problem for themselves. Truly, for real. I have thousands of students that are rich. I have hundreds of thousands of students that are financially free because of the teachings. Me going through what I did that I can now help them with. That's a real solving of a problem. So get your head off of the money, everyone. Stop thinking about money and start focusing on what problem can I truly solve for what group of people? What would I love to be able to help people with? What's my direction? I'm confused. I don't know what I should do. That's what you should do. You're on this earth, my friend, to do this, to solve a certain problem for people in this world, to make a freaking difference. If you don't believe that, fine, but you should believe it because it's helpful to you. Not because it's true or false. It's helpful to your happiness. It's helpful to your fulfillment. It's helpful to your satisfaction. And it's helpful to the world and the people that you help. It's a helpful thought. So I'm here to solve a problem and maybe several of them. Which one can I help people with right now? Which one? What do I like to? What would I love to be able to help people with? What am I pretty good at? What comes easily for me that comes, it seems to be hard for everyone else? Start thinking in those realms. Okay, so now you got a problem. Andrew, can everyone still hear me, you think? Is this worthwhile? Absolutely. You're on a roll here. Keep going. Okay, so listen, because I was where you guys are, and I kept thinking outside of me. So start with inside of you. What do what would I love to help people with? When you you know when you see somebody you're giving advice in something, or I'm good at this, and I can help you with it, just start thinking in those realms because you're good at at stuff, and most people are terrible at it. Okay, so how can I help people? Good. So now you got a way to help people. So now you're going to start solving their problem. So the next piece is, how well do you solve this problem for people? Because you know what? The truth is most people are, excuse my language, crap at what they do. They're terrible at it. Here's a good example. I went to a physical therapist. You know, I got a, bit, a little bit of some back issues. Went to a physical therapist and I went to two of them and they, they're talking to, their, to the other clients. They're talking to their uh, associates. They're looking at me once in a while. I'm like on my own. I go, what the hell? I don't think anything's happening here. I got questions. The guy works for me for, on, on my leg and then my, my hip and my whatever for two minutes one time. Throws an ice pack on me the next time for 20 minutes. I go, how come you didn't do this the first day? He says, I didn't have time. I go, I'm thinking to myself, this guy is crap at what he does. I don't care. He's been doing it for 30 years. He's, now he's kind of worse at it. Maybe he had it with him one day, but he's terrible at this. How do I know now? Because I'm with somebody that's really good. Now, now how bad that first guy was. So if you're going to do something, my friends, do it at a level freaking 10 or don't do it. Now, you can start at a 7. Don't start at a 6 or 5. You shouldn't be doing that. Don't even come out there with it until you start. Practice on friends and relatives for no money until you're good at it. You understand? That's how you do it. Start with not charging people until you're very good at what you do for people. And you really, really, really can help them. All right? And when you're decent at it, you start helping them. Okay. So you got, that's the next piece. You got to be very good at what you do. You got to be good at it. Not for you, for them. Solve their problem. Now, by the way, these problems can be small problems. They don't have to be a big problem. To this morning, for example, uh, Andrew asked me where I was. I'm, I'm in Maui. I have a, a home in Maui here. I have a few homes, and this is one of them, one of my favorites. I go to this little market in the mornings to pick up lunch for the afternoon. It's a little type of veggie wrap. It's gluten-free. It's dairy-free. You know, it's healthy. Da, da, da. Now, you know, you think that's no big deal, but you know what? Here's the thing. I found out they make 40 of these wraps every morning, and if I get there past 1230, I don't get one. 
Why? Because they're all gone. Don't you think that's pretty good? You go, well, what kind of problem is that? Hey, guess what, guys? I don't eat gluten and I don't eat dairy. So it's a big freaking problem for me to find decent food that's ready made to go that doesn't have that crap in it, okay? That's a huge problem. By the way, that is a huge problem. You want to make a billion dollars? Get into the gluten-free business. You want to make $10 billion? Get into gluten and dairy-free business and watch yourself get make $10 billion. Why? Because that stuff is bad for you, and most people are just starting to find that out. That's the coming thing. But you gotta be, it's got to be right for you. you got to be into nutritional stuff, health stuff, whatever. You can't be into just techno and real estate and try to do that because you won't make it. You won't make it. You'll fail at that, you see? But the person who's, that's the problem for me to solve. Well, I am gluten-free. I am, I'm a hint. I'm a health nut. This is what I do. I tell everybody, these are the sprouts you eat. These are the this you eat. This, are the, this is hyper grains you make. This is my thing. That's what you should do. What excites you, what's in it, what you would normally talk about to your friends and give them advice on. That's what you should do. Okay, so you're good at what you do now. Now, what's the next step? Well, now all you have to do is go out there and help one person. Now you're good at it. You help one person and you charge them a reasonable amount of money. So you help that person with whatever the problem is you're solving. Got it? And they're going to give you some money. So now you know how to make money. You got it. That's it. You now know how to make money. You're not thinking about money. You're thinking about solving a problem for somebody. I solve a problem for one person. Get it? And now this one person gives me X amount of dollars. Okay, now I know how to finally make money. Solve a problem for somebody. They give me money. They pay for it. Good. And I'm good at it. Now the question is, would you like to make more money? Yeah. Okay, what do you do? Do it again. Solve the same problem for another person. And guess what? They're going to give you money too. Want to make more money? Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. So, well, should I solve a whole bunch of problems? No, not yet. Get good at solving one problem for one person, then two people, five people, 10 people, 20 people, 50 people, 100 people, then 1,000 people. Got it? One problem that you're really good at solving. Good. Solve that problem. Now you got a thousand people paying you. But now here's an issue. So the question is, now let me go back, and I'm not going to get into the whole thing because there's a whole system around this, but some of the things you're going to have to think about and get good at are, well, how do I go, how do I go from one people to a hundred people, Harv? That's a great question. Well, if you want to go from one, if you're good at it, you want to go from one to a hundred, guess what? A hundred people are going to need to know you exist. So the next piece of it is you've got to get good at your message. What is the message you are putting out there? Now, listen closely, everybody. This is not a big ad. The message you put out there to let people know that you exist is, listen closely, write this down. I am giving you what most people in my seminars pay five dollars or $10,000 to get. Okay, let's listen closely here. The message is, write this down. If you have blank problem, I can help. My name is blah, 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 blah. I can help you with this new da 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 that I've developed da da da. Many people have da da da. I have helped da 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 da. If you've got this issue, I can assist you. What does that mean? I want you to do all of your marketing based in the problem. Problem, 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 problem. It's called a problem solution. They've got the problem. You must identify the problem. You must let them know that you know what problem it is. You must be clearly, clearly, exactly what that problem is. And then you let them know that you can help them because of your methodology and that it's proven and you've done it for other people and you can help them. And if they're not sure, here's the people that will tell them that I did. It's as simple as that. Don't get fancy. Don't get cute. Don't get complicated. Identify the problem directly. Tell them you can help them with that specific problem. And then you know what? You better freaking help them. You better help them. Now, now you're good at clarifying your message. Clear, you must be clear about your message. Clear about the problem that you solve for people and let them know. See, if you're not clear, then they're not clear that you can help them. And now it's a question of numbers, isn't it? So now you're, you're good at it. People know you exist. You, you're helping 100 people. Are you rich? No. Why aren't you rich? Because there's a good chance for a lot of you, unless your problem-solving method is a product or a technology that works without you, that for a lot of you, the problem that you solve takes you to solve it. You understand? 
What that means is you can earn a nice living, but you can, can, cannot get rich because unfortunately you've got to be there for the problem to be solved. Everyone listen. If you want to make money, it's okay for you to be there and have to be involved in the problem being solved. But if you want to get rich, you cannot be part of the solution anymore. So you start as being part of the solution. Like, look, Andrew is talking to me. Maybe not so much this time because I'm talking a lot. I apologize, everybody, but I'm excited. You know why I'm excited, Andrew? Because you told me who's on this call. You told me their ages and you told me their guys. And I just totally freaking relate to them because I was so disgusted and I'm very happy now and I'm quite rich. So I think I can help people. And this is how I do it. And so now you're saying, okay, I'm clear about the message that I've got. I'm clear about the problem, how I tell people I solve it. But the problem is that I've got to be there. So Andrew, you still got to be there for this. But Andrew, you can't get rich doing this because you got to be there. And you only have a limited amount of time, 24 hours in a day. If you're paid for your time in any way, shape, or form, you can never get rich. So now, Andrew and everybody else, once you're able to solve the problem for people truly and well, and for as many people as you can possibly handle yourself, you must use the next principle. The next principle is leverage. You must be able to, listen closely, systemize, write this down. Once you get good at solving the problem, you must then systemize how that problem is solved without you. You can monitor that system, but it has to be solved without you for you to get rich. Why? Because without that, you can't go to the next level, the wealth level. Does anybody want to know the, le- the wealth level? <laughs> Keep going, Harv. This is pure gold. Here it is. Remember, this is very simple. To make money, we solve a problem for one person, and they pay us. Now we made money. To make more money, we solve it for two people, then they pay us. To make even more, we solve it for 50 or 100, and now they pay us. Now, how do you get rich? You solve that same problem. If you want to make, listen closely, write this down, right? Everyone write it in first person. If I want to make a lot of money, write that down. If I want to make a lot of money, underline lot, I have to help a lot of people. Underline lot again. Lot and lot go together. Lot of money and lot of people go together. Got it? So you want to make some money, you help some people. You want to make money? Help one person. You want to make some money? Help some people. You want to make a lot of money? Help a lot of people. When I say a lot, I mean a lot. But if you have to be there for the problem to be solved, you can't help a lot. You can only help some. Get it? So how do you how do you help thousands and hundreds of thousands? And have them pay you by helping a lot of them. So you've got to leverage. You've got to systemize your way that you do this. And now, but this is not going to be on day one, by the way. And if you wait for it to be on day one perfect, it'll never happen. And you need to do it yourself first so you know that it works and you know people are happy and you can edit and you can do different versions and you can uh, recalibrate how you're doing it and make it better. Listen, the first time I wrote a course, was it great? No, it was only iffy. But I, I did it 10 times and I changed it every single time. Better, 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 better. Now people say it's one of the best programs in the world. They're not because it was the first time, because it's the 5,000th time. And every single time I make it better. So you got to do it yourself first. You know, you got to be president and head janitor on day one. It's the way it goes. Don't be afraid to do that. Don't get too fancy. I have a, 20, a 25-year-old son. You know what his problem was? Too much technology, too fancy, too swift, too leverage. I got to do everything like work from home and I just touch on a few buttons and every day and everything. And I'm making money while I'm sleeping and all that. The dream. I said, Jess, you got a great idea later. Right now, you don't have anything that really works. You need to be in it and on it and part of it. And you need to hear people. You need to be fully engaged in it. You don't leverage yet. You leverage later when it's real. When you really, really can help people, and you know this is a level, a level 10 out of 10, not level 7, 10, then you can leverage. And once you start to leverage, everything changes because now you have the numbers working in your favor. And now, let's say, for example, Andrew was able to get doing these podcasts, and I'm not sure how many people are paying it for it, et cetera, or let's say they bought one product for you for $1. Did you help solve a problem today? Let's say everybody paid a dollar for my talk today. A dollar. Well, if you have 100 people, you make 100 bucks. That's great. It buys you a coffee and a sandwich. That's super. Okay? You want to make $1,000. That's nice. But what about $100,000? What about doing one of these a month and making 100000 a month? You need 100,000 people paying you a buck. How do you do that? You can't do it with you all the time. You've got to leverage your – you've got to get joint ventures. You've got to get affiliates. You've got to get a lot of other people putting this – word out there and and all the people doing referrals and everything other people have to work with you and for you 
That's called leverage. Understand? So everybody, that's how you get rich. Stop. If you want to get rich, stop thinking about getting rich. If you want to make money, stop focusing on money. What do you focus on? Solving problems for people. Focus on the problem. Focus on people. Really care about them, actually, and really come from their point of view. When my son, who's learning to write copy right now, when he writes copy, it's good, but it's not great. And all the time he goes, Dad, I thought this was really good. I go, you know what? It's swift. It's stylish. It's cool, but it's not good. Why not? Because it doesn't smell like you understand what they're going through. You're being too cute. You're buy now, do this now. You could be this massive wealth and abundance. I said, that sounds like crap. It's bullshit. Okay. Yeah, that may happen, but you don't sound like you're compassionate. You don't sound like you understand what these people are, the problem they've got. And if you don't really feel for them, you should get into a different problem that you're helping them with. You've got to care for them. You've got to make a difference in their life. And you know what? When you do and you're smart about it, like I just taught you to do, you'll be a wealthy person. All right. And there we have it. Our path to wealth. Thank you so much, Arv. And just to recap, remove all excuses to why you can't get rich. And don't focus on making money. Don't have a set goal of, I want to be a millionaire. I want want this or that. You want to instead focus on solving problems and getting so good at solving problems that you can't be ignored. You want to learn and first create the best possible solution to solve a specific problem. And once you have it, once you have that perfect solution, you want to scale that. You're going to need leverage. So you want to create systems to solve those problems for a lot of people while you aren't there. And that's when you're making a lot of money. Just from hearing this, I can see that's where a lot of people get it wrong is they do find a solution that solves a problem really well, but they don't scale or they don't leverage. Therefore, they're going to become an employee of their own business. Well, with that said, it's time that we move into the knowledge round. (laughs) This is going to be great. I can already tell based on the way this interview is going that this is going to be an epic knowledge round. All right, Harv, are you ready for the knowledge round? I'm ready for it. For you, the listeners of the Knowledge for Men podcast, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their awesome service. And you know what? Something I've noticed after interviewing hundreds of successful people is that they all read a ton of books. If you want to be successful, you've got to educate yourself. I don't always have time to sit down and read a book, so I personally recommend listening to audiobooks in your car, in the gym, or on the go. You can pick up for free any one of my favorite best-selling books like How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie, Awaken the Giant Within by Anthony Robbins, Mastery by Robert Greene, Choose Yourself by James Altucher, The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho, or any other audiobook you want. Audible has over 100,000 titles to choose from. To download your free audiobook today, go to kfmbook.com. Again, that's kfmbook.com for your free audiobook today. Start learning, growing, and becoming the man you want to become now. Welcome to the Knowledge Round, where the guests will be asked rapid-fire questions to give the audience invaluable pieces of wisdom to help transform their lives. Starting in 3, 2, 1, showtime. All right, Harv, what advice would you give to someone who's feeling lost or unsure of their purpose in life? Stop thinking about yourself and start putting your attention on how can you help other people and what specific abilities, skills, and passions that you have that you would like to help other people with. Simple as that. All right. And Harv, what was holding you back from becoming the successful man that you are today? Two things. Number one, I was thinking about the vehicle. I was putting my attention on the vehicle, the car, the race car, that that was my going to be my claim to fame instead of me working on me. You are the root. I am the root. If I'm right, then the world is right. If I'm not right, then the world is not right. So put your attention on yourself. Grow you first. Grow your mind, grow your character, and grow your habits. Have good habits. Very, very quickly, my son, when he was in high school, he always said, Dad, I'm going to be rich. I'm going to be do this. I'm gonna do I said, that's great, but it's going to take you until you're 50 years old. He goes, what? He was always ready to kill me. He says, why would you say that? I says, because you know what? You have habits like everybody else, but your habits are, are the same as the habits as unsuccessful people have. You have unsuccessful habits. And until you have success habits, you will never get rich. So you need, hey, what are the success habits? Success habits. Hey, guess what? It's common sense. You know. They're sitting around doing emails in the middle of the day instead of 
of being productive when you're surfing the net and looking at whatever this junk you're looking on on Facebook is not productive, okay? That is a bad habit. It's obvious. Come on. So it sounds like you're talking about focusing on the things that matter and removing all little distractions that prevent you from meeting that larger goal. And on to the next question. Can you name a person who's had a tremendous impact on your life? Maybe someone who's been a mentor to you. Why and how did this person impact your life? What did he or she say? The person's name is Sherry Huber, H-U-B-E-R. She wrote a book called The Key. She's my Zen teacher. She's a Zen master, although she would never call herself a master because she is a master. I learned how to live in a much less stressful and much happier way and succeed in that manner. Prior to working with her, I was a warrior at heart. My dad was a warrior. He fought in two wars. I was a warrior. Everything was, I will do whatever it freaking takes. And uh, it was always a struggle. Uh, once I met her, I learned how to take a lot of the struggle out of life and things became a lot easier and even more successful. And you just mentioned a book which actually leads to the next question. What are some of the most influential books that you've ever read and why? Yeah, okay, so her book is called The Key. It's kind of like the primer of, of Zen philosophy. Another book that really helped alter my life is Dan Millman's The Way of the Peaceful Warrior. I know Dan really well. After reading his book, I felt that that was my next level, and I wrote a program called The Enlightened Warrior Training. That program is reaching its 20th year anniversary. It's worldwide. It's probably our signature program and experiential camp, and it's it just changes people's lives dramatically. And I owe a lot of that theme to uh, to Dan's idea. The next book I think that I would recommend that everybody read, again, these are primarily personal development books, but they're great. They're, they're not a bunch of fluff and crap. They're good. Is called A New Earth uh, by one of my favorite authors and a very good close friend of mine. His name is Eckhart Tolle. Uh, E-C-K-H-A-R-T-T-O-L-L-E, Eckhart Tolle. He also wrote The Power of Now. But this New Earth is a special book. And in fact, I had my daughter, Madison, in San Francisco. She's 27. She said, Dad, I want to kind of keep things up. What, you know, what can I do? I gave her this on CD, and she's listened to it like seven times. It says it's changed her life. It's just a great book. It's just personal development in a nutshell. And then the fourth book that I think is, is my favorite of all is called Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. It's by this wacko guy named T. Harv Eker. Yeah, don't get it. Don't get it. <laughs> yeah. No, I think uh, the reason I, I read that book every year, no matter what, because it keeps me on track and it's a really, really strong book because – and I really, really like it because A, it sounds the same way as I talk. B, it's, it's funny. And C, I love it because it has changed millions of people's lives. And I don't mean millions in a, in a generic sense. I mean literally millions as in the number. Uh, and I can't, I can't tell you how fortunate it, that I've been to be able to – and I'm going to say this word. And people are going to think I'm freaky, but to kind of channel a lot of those principles and, and being able to express them in this book. And it's been a blessing to be able to, to do that for people. Yes, Secrets of the Million Mind. I highly recommend the book. And on with the next question – Here's a scenario for you, Harv. If you could go back in time and you'd have the opportunity to tell your 20-year-old self what to do and also what not to do, what would you say? What I would tell him to do. Okay, number one, do what you're meant to do. Do what you love. That'll tell you what you're meant to do. Do what's in your heart. Do what you're passionate about. If you don't think you have a passion, you do have a passion. You just don't think that that passion can make you any money, okay? <laughs> That's a big difference. But if you stick to your passion and you help people in that passion, in that area that you're good at and you're passionate about, things will become good for you if, if you're the right person, you work on yourself, and you learn the skills of success. You learn the skills of business. You can't just go into helping people and be some dumbass in business and don't know anything about marketing, don't know anything about business and negotiations. You got to get that stuff, okay? So if you put those three things together, the passion or the, the purpose of really what you're good at, what, what really resonates in your heart, what you love. That's why I got in the fitness business, by the way. I used to be a fitness nut, and that's why I got into that. That's why I got rich. Everything else I did was just try to make money. When I did this, I said, you know what? Even if I don't, don't make money, at least I love being in this arena. That's what you got to do. So you put that together with the right you, and you learn marketing. You learn you learn technology, you learn business, you learn negotiation, you learn the skills of business, and literally nothing can stop you. Absolutely. And Harv, what do you think makes a successful man today? Here's one word for you. The word is this, integrity. Integrity. Most people have lost 
I, integrity. When you lose integrity, you lose your power. So number one, it's all about your owning your power, but not your power over people. It's your power over yourself. And when you don't have power over yourself, when you're out of integrity with yourself, what happens is you lose your power. When you lose your power, you lose your security. And you know what happens when you lose your security? People can smell the weakness on you. They smell weakness and they don't want to do business with you. The most important characteristic, and this is what I taught both of my kids, and I would say they're, they're, even as, they're as strong in this arena. The most important characteristic you need to develop for yourself is integrity. What does that mean? A lot of things to a lot of people, but here's what I mean. Do what you freaking said you're going to do, period. Period. No excuses, no BS. If you say you're going to do something, just do it. But Harv, what if I change my mind? Too bad. Then you shouldn't have said it. What if I want to change my mind? What if, what if I can't do it anymore? Too bad. Do it. What if it's inconvenient? Too bad. Do it. Get it done. It could be the smallest thing. Um, hey, you know what, Andrew? After this call, I'm going to send you a couple of things that I mentioned in an email, okay? And I'll send it to you right after the call. You know what? 90% of people will never do that. They'll say it. They'll yak it, but they won't do it. Or it'll come tomorrow. That's not what I said. I said, I'll send it right after. I have to send it right after. Period. Now, I'm just giving you an example. You say, I'm going to meet you. Hey, John, let's meet at Starbucks tomorrow and go over this stuff. I'll meet you at 9 o'clock. Is it okay to be at 9.05? No, it is not. Harv, you're being like too stringent. No, I'm not being too stringent. You know why I'm not being stringent? Because you're a freaking liar. You said you're going to be there at 9 and you were not. That makes you a liar. Straight and simple, black and white. You ask me what makes a man a man? A person who keeps their own integrity, keeps their freaking word. That gives you power. A man has power. And that's real power when you just simply do what you're going to say. When people say to my kids, what's the one thing about your dad that people don't know, blah, blah, blah. In all these things, that, you know what they always come up with? And I only found this out because I read it in a magazine. They both and they interviewed both of these people in a major magazine both of my kids separately. And for some reason, this came out, the same question came out the exact same answer. And it was, you know, what do we know? What's one thing about your dad that we don't know and the, that you love about him? And they both said the same thing. When my dad says something, it happens no matter what. Period. So just don't say it. No one's forcing you to say it. Don't open your freaking mouth. You don't have to blab and say, you're going to do this, you're going to do that. Okay, you know what? I want to be healthy. I'm not going to eat those cookies anymore. Guess what? You better not eat them. Oh, I'm just going to have one. You lied. You lied. Now, here's the problem. This is the problem. Listen, everybody. What we teach is enlightened warrior training. You must be a warrior. What does that mean? See, if you can't even keep your word, when you say to yourself that I'm not going to eat those cookies anymore, I'm not eating them this week, if you can't even keep your word to yourself, what do you think happens? Let's say you don't keep your word to somebody else. How do they feel about you? Do they trust you? No, they lose trust in you. So you say, I'm going to be there nine o'clock and you're not there till 920. Do they trust next time you say nine o'clock, you're going to be there nine o'clock? No, they've lost their trust in you. Okay, so now they've lost their trust in you. Are they going to do business with you? Yeah, if they're idiots, no one's going to do business with you because you cannot be a person of your word. And all you have to do is be a person of your word and you watch business pile on you because there's so few people who actually do what they say and keep their word. Okay? Simple. Now, let's say you don't keep your word to yourself. I'm not going to eat these cookies. And you eat them. I have a question for you. How do you feel? Well, you might feel okay for a minute, but actually you feel like crap about yourself. Why? Because you're a liar and you don't feel good about yourself. Your self-esteem goes down. Why? You don't even have the strength, the willpower, the discipline you don't even have the integrity to keep your own word to yourself and keep your own promises to yourself, keep your own commitments to yourself. My God. So what, now we said what happens to you when you don't keep your word to other people. So what do you think happens from you to you? How do you feel about yourself? Guess what? You lose trust in yourself because you can't trust yourself, right? I said, I'm going to do this and I didn't do it. I can't trust myself. So subconsciously, you can't trust yourself. So now how do you feel? You feel like crap. You feel insecure. You feel less confident. You don't feel empowered anymore. You're not powerful because you don't trust yourself. You want to be a man? 
You want to be a man? Own your power. You want to own your power? Trust yourself fully. Have full confidence. You want to have trust in yourself? Do what you say you're going to do. Be in full integrity, period, over and out. Integrity. I think that's something we all need to work on and really underestimate the effect that it has on you. Integrity. And Harv, do you have any last parting piece of guidance for the thousands of listeners today? Yeah, listen to this this conversation 10 times. <laughs> I'm not kidding no, you because you know what happens? True. Life is life is life. Life is busy. And we learn something and we go, "Oh, wow, that was cool." And okay, I'm going to do this, but do we do it? No, we don't do it. Why? Because we don't practice this. Listen, everybody, we are creatures of habit, 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 habit. You are a freaking robot. So am I. Okay. It's all about habits. So if you do something once, you're not in the habit of it. If you listen to something once, you're not in the habit. It doesn't matter how great this was. If you heard it once, you say, I'm going to do this. You barely do it or you don't do it. If you forget it and you stop doing it, you stop practicing it, it's as if you never heard it in your whole life and it won't work for you. You've got to take just a few things and focus on them and make them part of your life. So I made a mistake and I apologize because I said if I had one parting piece of advice, I'd listen to this 10 times. I apologize. It it was wrong. 10 is not the right number. 30 times, 30 days in a row. I don't have that kind of time. Great. Then you don't have time to get rich. Too bad. Now you know you don't do what it takes. What does it take? If you can't listen to all of it, listen to at least 15 minutes of this, a quarter of it each day, and then go back to the beginning. But guess what? It's not 30 days now. Now it's times four is 120 days. Every single day, every morning, 15 minutes. Yeah, well, I don't know if I can. Great. You don't know a lot of things. In fact, you'll never get rich either. If you can't, hey, if you can't handle this for 15 minutes, what makes you think you can handle getting wealthy? Guess what, everybody? Getting rich is a lot harder than listening to this thing for 15 minutes. You understand? If you can't do this, you'll never do that. Start with the little things. Make a commitment. Do what you said you're going to do. Stick with something. And guess what? If you listen to this for 15 minutes a day for 120 days, I promise you something. You're going to get rich. Why? Because you're going to be the kind of person that can stick with something and do what they said they're going to do. And you know what? It'll infuse in you. And then my voice, whether it's my voice or anybody else's voice, will infuse and it'll, you'll start thinking like this automatically and you will start owning your power and you'll start helping people and you'll start having compassion and you'll start going in the right direction and the things will start coming naturally for you and you're going to start becoming successful and happier and you're going to go, whoa, I don't know what happened. What happened was you did what you said you're going to do. You listened to this thing for 15 freaking minutes a day. That's all you did. And you watch what starts happening in your life. That's all I can promise you. You'll have developed character. All right, and that's going to conclude the knowledge round. And Harv, what's exciting you today? What wakes you up in the morning? Well, you can see that I'm pretty excited when I talk to people about you. Yeah, you are. Absolutely. Yeah, because you know, I hear so many things that, you know, when I listen to it, I go, that's crap. It just doesn't work at all, you know? I did that. It didn't work. I was broke when I did that. So I'm very fortunate that I was broke for so many years and that I learned some principles that began to really change my life. And now that I put them into place, whenever I do these principles and I live them, my life works beautifully. Whenever I fall off the wagon and I stop living the principles, principles, my life turns to crap like anybody else. So at least I know where to go back to. So I'm very fortunate like that. And I have a lot of students all over the world and it seems to work for them. So that's what gets me up in the morning is that uh, six months ago, I designed a brand new program because I was finding that for a lot of people, they had parts of their life were working and a lot of the other parts were not working. So they never could put it together. They couldn't get their ultimate life, their perfect life together. And it was kind of like, well, my money's working now, but my business isn't working. My business is working, but my relationship sucks. Or now my relationship is working, but my health is crap. Or I'm working, I'm great in shape, but now I got no money. And it's like, I could never get the damn thing together. How do I get it together? So I had that problem myself. I was flying all over the world, you know, doing really well in business, making millions of dollars a year, et cetera. But guess what? I wasn't seeing my kids. I wasn't close to them. My relationship was failing, blah, blah. I couldn't do it myself. So finally I developed a system. I only teach what works for me. I'm the guinea pig first. Then I start working exactly like I taught you guys. Then I start working it with friends and family and see if it works for anybody else. About six months ago, I took this system that changed my life. I started, and because it changed my life, call it the magical life makeover system. And it's very specific, seven very specific steps that put into place in order 
started putting everything together with for me. And when thing and I and I truly when I do these seven steps, I actually have the perfect life. My money's good, my business is good, my relationships, all my relationships are good, all of my health is good, my environment stuff is good, my lifestyle is good, my spiritual life is good. I mean, my my learning is good. Everything is in great shape. And the minute things start to fall off, I go back to the system, I use it for about four minutes, and I put it back together. And I've been in more than blown away at how amazing this works. And I've been looking and going, oh my God, why don't people know this? And so I started putting it out, and the feedback that I got was the best feedback by far of any program that I've ever put out there about how fast this works. In fact, I put out something called a three-day life makeover program. And all it's only three 90-minute webinars. And then you do your little bit of homework after each after each webinar. It's actually usually about five minutes or so, whatever it is, sometimes less. And then you come back the next day, we do that, and it's three three days only, three 90-minute uh, webinars. And the results are just mind blow up for people. And so I'm just now starting to put this out there for people. It's a very specific system and I'm not going to get into the web you know, all about it because it's it'll take too long, but I'll give you a couple of clues that you need to work on. Number one is clarity. It answers the question, what do I really want? Number two is what I said earlier, why don't you already have it? If you can't answer that, guess what's going to happen? It's going to continue for you. Your reason why not is the most powerful way to get to why yes, but you don't know what's holding you back. We're going to get to that. And then the question is, now I know what do I want, and now I know why don't I have it. Now the question is, what the heck do I do about it? And that's where we start working on strategies and actions with you, et cetera, et cetera. So all I can say is that it works. It works for miracles. It works for me. It works for now. I'm not going to say tens of thousands because it hasn't been put out there into the world yet. We're just starting to put it out there. The feedback's been phenomenal. And so you're just in the right place in the right time with it. People say, you know, how much is this program? I say, well, what do you think it's worth? The answer returning is thousands of dollars. I don't know how much it's worth. But when we put it out there, it'll be $995 when we do the whole program. Here's the deal, very simply. I feel for everyone in your group, Andrew. I was where you were. I would love to talk to these guys even more because you're my brothers. I don't want to, I'm not the kind of person that goes, oh, I really have to give back. I never feel that. I never feel like I have to give back because. I don't know what, like, I just don't feel that. What can I tell you? I just don't. But what I do feel is that I was lucky. I was very fortunate to be, have the skill to not only be, become very successful myself coming from bad to, to great, but to be able to explain it to other people. And that's an unusual skill. Bill Gates has a thousand times more money than I do and is way more successful in his arena than I am. But you know what? He can't explain it to people. He can't explain how do you do it. I'm very fortunate that I'm very, very successful, richer than most rich people, I guess people would say, and very happy. I have a great life. I have three homes, one in Lake Tahoe, one in San Diego, one in Maui. I have another one in Arizona. I have another one in the islands. I mean, I, you know, I have too many of them. I'm trying to get rid of them. But literally, I'm very fortunate, but I'm able to explain it to people in a simplified way because I'm not that smart. So for me to understand it, I got to be able to, it's got to be simple and workable and doable and something that works in the real freaking world, not a bunch of complicated principles. Who cares about that? I don't. I'm not interested in complication. I'm interested in simple that works. If you can't, it doesn't produce a result at the end of the day, who needs it? So this program, the Life Makeover program, is what I'm going to do something very, very unusual, and here's what it is. It's going to be, for some of you, it's going to be a gift. A gift for how much? complimentary, a scholarship. And it's going to be from me and it's going to be from Andrew because Andrew was the one who said, you know what? I would love for you to be able to talk about this with my people because so many of them are looking for direction. So many of them are looking for when, how do I get started? How do I take the next level? How do I get my whole life together? My whole life's in front of me. And I go, oh my God, I have the perfect thing for these guys. All right. So here it is. It's complimentary. It's a gift from me to you. The entire three-day life makeover program, the whole system is complimentary for you. Now, some of you are going to go, oh, yeah, well, you know, that's great. And you're not even going to register. And that's your life right there. 
That's great. And this will show you how serious you are about your life and about success and about achievement. It'll show you. Because if you can't take advantage, if you won't even take advantage of a gift like this, you're telling the universe not to help you. Because I'll tell you what, if you're listening to this, I believe there's no accidents in the universe. Now, you may not believe that, and that's okay. But I believe there's no accidents. And you are meant to be on this call. You are meant to be listening right now. You're meant to get all this information and that I just talked about for the last hour. And you are meant to be on this three-day life makeover, or else you would never have heard it. Okay? That's the way it is. You're in the right place at the right time. So don't, don't discourage yourself, and don't screw yourself with some excuse. So here's how you register, very simply. Enter this www.3daylifemakeover.com forward slash men. So we know it's complimentary. Uh, if, you don't end, if you don't put that specific forward slash, then you're going to pay for it, okay? It's, this is for Andrew's people here, right? I'll say it again, triple W dot three, the numeral three, the numeral three day life makeover dot com forward slash men. Okay, and go online right as soon as you hear this and register for it. And what's going to happen is you're going to, within a week or two, you're going to get the information sent back to you as to how to get started, when the program is. You're going to choose your time because right now we just started putting it out to the rest of the world. So you're probably going to see lots of times for Johannesburg or Singapore or Australia or whatever, but it's only been very short that we started to put that out there and they all have to pay. So you are getting it as a gift. So I hope you take advantage of this. This is going to, it's going to give you a system, a systematic way of living your perfect life. And here's the cool thing. You'll not only get to it now, very, very quickly, and you'll be in shock at how fast everything can come together in your life, but you're going to have a way. And this is the key thing, everybody. You're going to have a way that when things start to feel like they're unraveling for you a little bit, you're not that happy or this part of your life isn't working as good or you're not sure about this, you're going to be able to go back to this system and bring it right back together, right back together, literally within hours, hours, okay? Now, that's the part I love because you know what? Nothing's perfect and everything is energy and all energy travels in frequencies of vibration. So it's up and down, up and down, up and down. So if you go to a perfect life, guess what? In a couple of weeks, it ain't going to be so perfect anymore. It's just the way it is. But the problem with most people is they never get to their perfect life. And then if they do, they go, they, they go down and they never know how to get back up. They don't, they don't know how to get – they got there in the first place. This is a systematic method of living that ultimate life, and it's in all parts of your life. And these steps are, all I can tell you is they work, they work, they work. And I'm just blessed to be able to have this for people, and I'm blessed to be able to give it to you, gift it to you, and um, I, it's a blessing for you too. So anyways, that, I think everyone's got that website. So you're just going to go to uh, www3 daylifemakeovercom forward slash men, claim your, uh, claim your gift from us, and, and then for sure, let Andrew know what's happening in your life. You know, I would love for them to be able to in contact with you and with me to let me know what's happening. There's a method there for you to let us know, by the way, so we'll know how you're doing, <laughs> okay? This is all a system. All right, Harv. Thank you so much for doing that and making that a free course for my community. I really appreciate that, Harv. And go ahead and give yourself a plug so how the audience can connect with you in the future. I believe the website is harvecker.com. Harvecker.com. Um, I don't go there, so you know I'm not quite sure. But that's probably the way to get hold of us and see what we're doing a little bit. But generally, the way to do it is just do one of our programs. There's no use of getting a hold of me or anything like that. If you don't like our that's what I do. If you don't like what I do, then you shouldn't be with me. But do the program, and you'll see what we do, and then you'll want to continue or you don't. That's going to be I mean, the test is in actually in the doingness of it, not the yeah. I'm a big believer in my favorite phrase, that, by the way, if people want to ask you, what's your favorite phrase? Here it is. Talk is cheap. So I'm not into the talking. I'm into the doing. So learn, do. Learn, do. Learn, do. Without the, do, without the learning, the doing is useless. Without the doing, the learning is useless. They both have to go together. Harv, it's been great having you be on the Knowledge for Men show. And this is by far, it looks like the longest episode that I've ever done. But I think the listeners, I think if you're listening to this now, you would definitely agree that there was a ton of value that you learned from this episode. So Harv, I thank you for that. Hey, fantastic. You were awesome too. Thank you so much. All right. And there you have it. That's going to wrap up episode 28 with T. Harv Ecker of The Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. 
Thank you for listening to the Knowledge for Men podcast show. It's been a pleasure having you be a part of a thriving community of men who want to crush it in all aspects of life. I'm on a mission here to inspire millions of guys. And with your help, we're going to make a dent in the universe. Check out knowledgeformen.com for a ton of free content that's designed to help you live a remarkable life. Again, that's knowledgeformen.com. I hope to see you there. And always remember, 2014 is the official year of the crush, where we take action to get the life we've always dreamed of. This is your host, Andrew Farabee. And until next time, let's do it.